We're on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue our look at Wednesday's Supreme Court decision in the case of McCutcheon versus FEC, described by many as the next Citizens United. In a five to four vote, the court's conservative justices eliminated a long standing limit on how much donors can give in total to federal candidates, party committees, political action committees in a two year election cycle. Joining us now is Andy Kroll, senior reporter at Mother Jones Magazine, where he's written extensive about campaign finance and dark money. Uh, welcome to Democracy Now!, Andy. Why don't you first tell us who Sean McCutcheon is? What is this Supreme Court case based on? Sean McCutcheon is a wealthy businessman from Alabama who, during the 2012 elections, um, decided that he wanted to cut a bunch of checks to right-leaning congressional candidates that he supported. You know, he, he actually made the checks out in the amount of $1,000. Seven hundred and seventy-six dollars, seventeen seventy-six. You know, he's a self-styled patriot, I suppose. What he found was that he could write, you know, several dozen of these checks, twenty-seven of them, but he could not write the twenty-eighth. He had bumped up against what was called the the aggregate limit. This this kind of overall limit that was at issue in yesterday's ruling in front of the Supreme Court, um, with the, you know, from, with the urging of some conservative lawyers and ultimately the help of the the whole Republican Party. Sean McCutcheon you know, took his case to court and said, I don't think that you should be able to stop me from writing as many $1,776 checks as I want. Um, and knowing that with the Roberts court the way it is, his challenge would uh, stand a pretty good chance of succeeding. Um, he filed a case um, uh, um, well over a year ago and has taken it all the way to the top. And yesterday we saw that the, the uh, Roberts court agreed with him. Um, uh, the statement of Sean McCutcheon praising the decision, he said, today the United States Supreme Court took a stand in favor of our constitutional freedom of speech as codified in our First Amendment. First Amendment free speech enables us to support candidates for public office who share our views. While I understand some base limits on the dollar amount of single contributions, limits to the overall number of candidates, parties and committees are nothing more than unnecessary limits to First Amendment freedom, he said. Uh, so can you respond to that? What exactly? Exactly, did this Supreme Court decision? Um, does it mean for well for the 2014 midterm elections? Well, it's empowered the, the, this very tiny slice of wealthy Americans who are fired up about politics and want to throw their money around in a whole new way. Now, before this decision yesterday, if you were a wealthy one percenter or point one percenter and you wanted to get involved in politics, a Sheldon Adelson, uh, a Michael Bloomberg. You know, you had options uh, of forming a super PAC or giving to a super PAC. You know, these entities ushered in after Citizens United that can raise and spend unlimited amounts of money. You could also give to a nonprofit group. These are the shadowy entities that uh, the Koch brothers um, like to use that also accept and raise, uh, uh, accept and spend unlimited amounts of money. Um, now, for the 2014 election, you can also cut checks of you know, $2.3 million to support a whole array of congressional candidates. You, can, you could write a check for more than $10 million to political action committees. So this decision is going to reshape you know, the, the world, but really for a tiny amount of, of, of people in this country who have that kind of means. And you know, now they can also, you know, in addition to giving to super PACs, in addition to giving to nonprofit groups, they can also give money to parties and candidates and PACs. So it's, a, it's another option for a very tiny slice of, uh, of our population. Uh, during oral arguments for McCutcheon versus the Federal Election Commission, Justice Antonin Scalia questioned U.S. Solicitor General Don Verrilli, who defended limits on combined campaign contributions. Scalia argued even if the limits were lifted, allowing donor to give $3.5 million to candidates and parties during a two-year period, that amount would be small compared to the large sums spent during an election season. This is a clip of their exchange. If you assume somebody that gives the maximum to every possible candidate and party he can contribute to throughout the United States, 3.5 million, just to put that in perspective, how much money is spent by political parties and PACs in all elections throughout the country? 
No, I, I think in, a, in, in one election cycle. I think that's a good point, Justice Scalia. I think it you have any idea how much? I do. I do. Take the 2010 elections, non-presidential year. Each party spent, and, and parties and candidates together on each side spend approximately $1.5 billion. $1.5 billion. And, and what right. about PACs? Uh, that, that I don't have the specific. Oh, for, but that the party, was a lot in the last but, few but elections. The parties, but, but here's the problem. And, 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 and what about newspapers that, uh, that spend a lot of money in endorsing candidates and promoting their candidacy. I suppose, but, you, you know, you, you have to put in that money, too. That is money that is directed to political speech. When you add all, add, when you add all that up, I don't think $3.5 million is a heck of a lot of money uh, I don't spread think, throughout the country. I don't think that's Justice Antonin Scalia questioning U.S. Solicitor General Don Verrilli. Um, can you explain that for us, Andy Kroll? Yeah, the, the, the Solicitor General was giving examples of how, if the court did agree with Sean McCutcheon, donors would be able to cut seven- and eight-figure checks to political parties and to candidates. If, you know, this 3.5 million number is one that's been tossed around to candidates and parties during an election cycle. And uh, Scalia sort of takes a, a, a very common uh, and I think disingenuous approach among conservatives, which is to say, well, 3.5 million, compare it to how much we spend on elections, well, that's just a drop in the bucket. Not very much money, as he said there, but obviously to the average person, 3.5 million in terms of political speech is a huge number. And if you talk to members of Congress or people who are running for office, 3.5 million from a single donor absolutely is a lot of money. And it means a lot. And it has an effect on people running for Congress. It has an effect on those in office thinking about legislating, thinking about the ramifications of their decisions, and knowing now that a donor has the ability to write this seven-figure check um, if they either maybe agree with you or don't agree with you, or they think your party is good, think your party is bad. So I think, it, you know, as, as Senator John McCain, uh, who actually supports some more campaign finance regulation, has said, you know, he, he thinks the Supreme Court is just naive about how campaigns and elections and influence work here in Washington. Um, and I would tend to think that Senator McCain is on to something there. Talk about the unusual um, reading of the dissent by Justice Breyer from the bench. Yeah, uh, Justice Breyer just, uh, he completely disagrees with the, uh, you know, J Chief Justice Roberts' uh, opinion in McCutcheon, as well as Justice Clarence Thomas's uh, opinion that went even further and basically said, let's just nuke campaign finance re uh, regulation entirely. Uh, you know, Justice Breyer uh, you know, really thinks that, that, that the, the Roberts court um, takes a far too narrow definition of what is actually corruption, and thus, what can we regulate and what can't we regula regulate? You know, Justice Breyer believes that um, you know, the, the Roberts Court has narrowed the definition of what corruption is, essentially you know, a donor basically putting money in the back pocket of a lawmaker, and, and narrowed it to the, to the degree to which basically no campaign finance regulation can stand anymore. And, and Justice Breyer ha ha has been very vocal in saying that, hey, look, you know, politics it doesn't just work like that. Corruption just doesn't work like that. There are bigger issues at play here. And, you know, our democracy doesn't work when you have donors basically free to write checks for a million or 10 million if you're talking about a super PAC. Um, and so Breyer has been very outspoken about that. Um, and his dissent was of quite a read uh, yesterday. And I, I recommend it to anyone who wants to wrap their head around this issue. Andy Kroll, um, talk about how these pi campaign finance regulations were put into place. Go back to Watergate. Sure, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a history lesson. So, so before Watergate, there really was no strong regulation of how money flows into our politics. You have the Watergate scandal, which at its core was a campaign finance scandal. You had a, a wave of lawmakers swept into office who were pro-reform, who supported you know, more regulation and, and supported some kind of system um, about, you know, for how our campaigns and elections work. You had the creation of the Federal Election Commission, for instance, in the wake of Watergate. And you, that law, you know, the, 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 the regulation after Watergate is challenged in court. The case is known as Buckley versus Vallejo, which some people might have heard of. And it, you know, opinion in 1976, um, in the Buckley versus Vallejo case, the Supreme Court decision, 
says that, yeah, it's okay. You can put limits on contributions, me, the donor, giving to you, the candidate. You can put limits, like this aggregate limit, this overall limit that, that was at issue in McCutcheon. Um, and the court said, you know, there is a real interest in protecting against corruption or the appearance of corruption, the kind of corruption that we saw in the Watergate scandal and in, in many instances before that. And so that is sort of the, the bedrock of this system we have now. And what we have seen since 1976, practically, is a systematic effort by conservatives, by libertarians, to demolish that bedrock. And Andy Crow, we just have 30 seconds, but how this will affect the states individually? Mm, yeah. Well, there are uh, a dozen states that have similar overall limits on the books, and those limits are about to be destroyed. I mean, they, they, it's just a matter of time before the attorney general or some election administrator in those states says, well, our limit's unconstitutional, too. So this, is a, this, this decision will resonate in Congress, and it will resonate in these states. Mm. Andy Kroll, thanks so much for being with us. Senior reporter at Mother Jones Magazine's written extensively about campaign finance and dark money.